This is a little more, ah, uh, ooh, ah, uh, ooh. <laughs> What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. And this is the, the Paul, Paul and Morgan, Morgan the Paul and Morgan, Morgan show. show. Today's episode of The Drop. We got a few things on the agenda, on the docket. We got the new Messiah series on Netflix that we need to talk about. Need? That's a strong word. We're gonna be talking about if our honeymoon phase is over. <laughs> I keep laughing, I don't know why I'm laughing. <laughs> and we're gonna get into our workout routine. Yeah, I'm excited for this one. But first, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. We make Christian videos on life, love, and dating to help you have hope. And be free. We wanna say thank you to our loyal patrons, to people who've supported us on Venmo, those who are investing in this channel. You guys really do make this possible. We're extremely grateful for you all. Thank you. Yes, thank you all so much. If you guys want to support us and go deeper with us, if you've had an Instagram message that's been sitting in our inbox forever and we still haven't gotten to it, consider becoming a patron because we spend a little more time making sure we really, really respond to our patrons. We're able to give them the priority. Go to patreon.com slash Paul and Morgan show or click the link in the description. Thanks guys. First drop. The first drop today is Messiah on Netflix. Here's what happened. We actually, we saw, oh man, there's a new Netflix show, Messiah. Mystery shrouds this. Should we watch it? Should we not? We both, I feel like, are a little skeptical when it comes to Netflix yeah, talking on, on. faith-related things. Mm -hmm. But then I actually got a message on Instagram from a friend on there that I like, and he <laughs> said, he said, guys, have you seen that new Netflix show, Messiah? Um, what? Yeah, he's from across the pond. <laughs> Some might, I can't remember exactly what he said, but some might think it's controversial, but I actually really enjoyed it as a Christian. Lo and behold, Morgan and I turn on episode one. And here we are, 10 episodes done. Uh, yeah, we, we finished. We binge watched it last <laughs> night and watched four episodes. <laughs> the, the last four episodes. We finished it. For those intrigued, we'll post the trailer for Messiah in the description. It's interesting. Dean, because Paul and I kind of, I think, see a little bit differently on it. Okay, we, yeah, and that's one of the things it does is it really, it makes you think. Like, I still don't know what their agenda is behind this show. Like, what are they trying to, like, push across? I don't know, because, like, they never took it too far where it was like, okay, this is clearly they're trying to push the... X political agenda, agenda of blah blah or okay they're clearly trying to push this the, religion well yeah like it wasn't ever that so i was just like what is this so you like, were you were conflicted at what the purpose of the show was that kind yeah. of upset you no it didn't upset me i was just like <laughs> trying to figure it out the whole time. I went into it skeptical. Like, okay, it's Netflix, it's talking, obviously it's going to be playing on the Christian views of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And it did um, in many ways. And of course, I'm not going into it like this is a biblical-based, super solid, authoritative show that's gonna strengthen my faith. But still, I was like, okay, when they start subtly twisting things, I'll be able to point to scripture and say, all right, that's off. Still enjoyable or whatnot, but that's off. But it really did, it made you think, it made you go back to scripture and be like, okay, hmm, well, let's see what Jesus said here. Let's see what he did here, right? Yeah, so basically the synopsis of a Messiah is this guy comes into the picture, starts making a name for himself as Al Masai. The whole time you're thinking, is this like the second coming? Right. Is this like Jesus come has come back? And like people, that's what people are thinking and wondering, which like there's a CIA gets involved and they're like, you know, thinking this guy's a terrorist. So you're like going back and forth like, is this guy a terrorist or is he the second coming? Like, right. is he Jesus? And it, it does it. I mean, for the sake of the show, like it keeps you on edge. It keeps you on the fence because then they'll throw in some things and you'll be like, okay, yeah, he's a schemer. Like yeah. he's not, there's no way. And then like, they'll, he'll do some type of miracle or do something else. And it's like, okay, it's like that was a Jesus move, you know? <sighs> and and I could see, like, we got to give the disclaimer. I could see somebody that would watch that and say, like, Christians shouldn't be watching this. They shouldn't be promoting it. Like, here's something that happened and it clearly not biblical. And again, like, I think you have to go into it realizing it's not like a Christian 
authoritative. It's coming from Netflix, it's which is a very liberal. And we didn't do company. a lot of right. We didn't do a lot of research on the, the producers of it, the right. the team that was in it. Again, like their motives behind it. But I would say again, on a positive note, I can guarantee there are Christians that don't know the Bible very well, non-believers, whoever that are watching this and that are probably going to the Bible to look stuff up afterwards or are probably having conversations of, okay, whoa, that just happened in this. What does the Bible say on that? I, I just, I guarantee it. It is sparking some good conversation. Probably. It's sparking some faith-based conversation. It is interesting too because there's a scene, and this isn't gonna like give anything away, but there's a, a character in the show that is Muslim, and he, you know, is reads the Quran, believes the Quran, and as this Al Masai second coming guy, Jesus is coming back, so to speak. He starts becoming very like, like, wait, what, like. But I've believed the Quran, and now, like, it's actually the Bible is true. Like, wait. And, like, he struggles with a lot of anger and frustration. They, and, like, they explored so many of those delicate things that are actually, like, a lot have a lot of people on edge. Yeah. A lot of people could get very upset by They actually explored them mm -hmm. in a way that you watch, and you're like, Okay, I'm not that upset by the way they did that. It's just very interesting how people just like run to him and want so desperately to believe in him. It explored a lot and guys, we're not suggesting like saying, oh, our audience, go watch that. Like we would say, our audience, go watch The Chosen because yeah. we love The Chosen. <laughs> this is a little more, ah, ooh, ooh, ah, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but we would say like, we saw it. Yeah, there, there's some cursing. Yeah, there was one sex scene that we fast forwarded, but I'm not sure how far they went. Um, so yeah, like it's just one of those. But we're just being honest with you guys. We watched it. And we'd be interested to hear if any of you all have watched The Messiah. What are your thoughts? Yeah. We want to know. We do. So comment below because I genuinely want to see your all's thoughts on this. Because it is. It's a controversial thing. It's a controversial topic. Don't get offended because we watched it. Don't get offended because we got some good stuff out of it. Like, we're said, allowed to. You said that Mike Bickle from IHOP. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure we were, right. So I just kind of YouTube like, Messiah reactions and Mike Bickle from IHOP, um, mm -hmm. who I enjoy hearing his take on some things, had commented on it and he had a good take as well, so. On to the next drop. Is our honeymoon phase over? Drop number two. So we actually, uh, I, I didn't watch the video, but I saw that Jess and Gabriel, who many of you guys know of and might follow, they posted that topic and I was like, let's talk about it, Morgan. That's an interesting question. It's an interesting topic. First off, guys, everyone's honeymoon phase is different. Some they have a great first six months of marriage, an amazing first year of marriage, first month of marriage, just bliss, lovey-dovey hard eyes hard eyes for each other wrong. your wife's the queen of the world your <laughs> husband's the macho king <laughs> sexy in every way okay, buddy. our experience i think morgan and i would both say like uh, honeymoon we're still in the honeymoon phase i wasn't gonna say it first <laughs> but <you> say it. <laughs> i think morgan and i would both definitely say that even though circumstantially and stuff, like there's difficulties that we're still working through and whatnot, it's definitely our best year yet. Yeah, three and four have been good years. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've talked about this before, just how different we are. And so for us to get married and then like just really- wow. talk about just getting slapped up the side of the head <laughs> of like, we are so different and it hurts. Like the difference is, are challenging. Yeah, because like the enemy wants to use our differences to pull us apart, but like the Lord wants to use our differences to help us understand like, oh, we're different and this is how we can make one another stronger because of our differences. This is some sage wisdom. You guys <laughs> write that down. So we battled with the enemy trying to like wreck us and God trying to show us like, no, this is good that you're different. And now you just have to learn how to like mold together and be one. How can we use these differences to glorify 
God. Yeah, and to just get more mature. It takes a while to figure that out. And so for us, our honeymoon phase never really exists. Did we have a honeymoon phase? I think it literally was on our honeymoon. And that was a good honeymoon. That was a fun honeymoon. Okay, so we, um, we had a very short but blessed honeymoon phase. Well, our encouragement to you is if you have a honeymoon phase, like, God bless that. If it's a year long, amazing. But at some point, things are gonna get <laughs> real. Most likely, just a little more like, okay. I mean, some couples might be married 10 years and say, like, for the majority of our marriage, it's felt like a honeymoon. It, again, everyone's different. Even in our year, first year of marriage, like, we still had a blast. Yeah. Like, we still loved each other and, right. like, had fun times. But yeah, it was really hard because. We we're just learning how to live with one another, how to honor one another, how to honor the Lord. The Lord uses marriage to change people, to make us more holy. Yeah. Now, to the next drop. Morgan, everyone is asking, what are you doing for health, for exercise? We just have a feeling that you've been on a very interesting journey and we want to hear about it. <laughs> like nobody, I feel like nobody has said that. <laughs> I think they have. I think they have. Okay, people do ask us what we do for like workouts, how do we eat normally, blah, blah, blah. So we figured we'd cue you all in. We'd let you know. Paul grew up in a family that is literally, like his dad is trainer Joe. Like he literally like has a health and weight loss business. So like his whole life has been we eat really healthy, not super strict, but like they don't buy things at the grocery that have certain ingredients in it. And sure. Which is good. That's very, good. very health conscious. But yeah. I was not used to that. Not saying my family's super unhealthy, but like we didn't really, I never saw or noticed that my mom would like pay attention to the ingredients on the box. Like we got fruity pebbles and they have hydrogenated serum. So were fruity pebbles the closest thing to fruit for you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Booyah! Well! No! Did you guys ever see anything ripe, like fresh, <laughs> like fruit or vegetables? My mom's gonna come after you, boy. But just around the house, <laughs> was there ever yes, anything plant apples and plant based? Grapes. Okay, you did. Not just like apple jacks, but actually. <laughs> so I haven't ever, like, watched what I have eaten because like I could literally eat anything and I stayed skinny my she, whole life. She, yeah, she Up would, well until. she would say she would say she she stayed skinny eating crap cruddy stuff but she didn't feel good. Again. Yeah. Can I felt, that? Oh my goodness. I was constantly look guys, I'm not exaggerating. Well first of all I had IBS and I was lactose intolerant and lactose intolerant, I don't know. Growing up, I had a lot of stomach issues, but I ate crap, so that probably <laughs> took, went hand in hand oh, it definitely with did. my stomach, it did. It because did. looking at your, your life now, yeah. you don't struggle near to the extent you did yeah. with the stomach stuff, the toilet <laughs> stuff. I would not go to the bathroom for like two weeks. And then for a whole week, I would just be in the bathroom like all day long. And guys, like it's crazy how much, how far I've come. Like I've said this in a video, I think before, I used to every day almost on my way to work to nanny, not every day, but pretty uh, several times a week, I would drink a big Coke and a Krispy Kreme donut. <laughs> that would be my meal for like the whole day. So anyway, now fast forward. <laughs> You've had um, an awakening. An awakening. So yeah. tell us about that because you were telling me you've kind of taken it in as a spiritual thing. Yeah. So for me, like I have to look at it in a spiritual way because if I don't, then like I will just kind of get it, like not care about it. I won't make it a priority. But like I felt like the Lord knew that like he knew that if he could reveal to me that morgan this is for me like this is not just because oh you need to eat healthy because paul wants you to eat healthy or because you just should eat healthy like this is for me this is to honor me and so like he has kind of woke me up to that revelation realization that like being healthy like he's called me to be healthy mentally spiritually and physically and so that means like working out several times a week. That means eating right the majority of the time. Does that mean that I don't have a chocolate chip cookie every now and then? No. Does that mean I don't drink Coke every now and again? No. <laughs> 
but it is no longer my lifestyle like it used to be. Um, and so, and it's like, it's a God honoring thing. And I think more people, like we, more of us need to look at like our physical health as a God honoring thing. I mean, obviously there's a verse in the Bible that talks about, you know, your body is a temple for the Lord, like to live in, to dwell in. And, and the apostle Paul says, I discipline my body and make it my slave so that when I have preached to others, I myself would not be disqualified. So like there's, there's so much precedence. And like you said, physically, spiritually, and mentally, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of overlap in those. Yeah. And if one of those is just out the window, you know, you completely neglected it, it's going to bleed into those other two. Yeah. And guys, like, I know that this is a sensitive topic. Like, it's terrifying to talk about, you know, being overweight or eating unhealthily and i think like a lot of it is just the enemy has his hand um on this whole like topic of you know being healthy and what is it what does it look like to be healthy because maybe self-love is healthier than you working out because that stresses you out and you need to just love yourself so don't work out because mm -hmm. that's overwhelming don't say no to the junk food because that makes you feel better um, something that trainer Joe, Paul's dad, talks about a lot is something that I would do is I would run to junk food when I was stressed out. Um, and he says, like, we run to junk food, we run to uh, these unhealthy habits to satisfy us. But after we've, you know, eaten that cookie, is our problem solved? No. After we've sat and cried for hours and um, eaten all the, the crap around the house, has that fixed the issue? No. And so we need to be running more towards the Lord um, for our like stressful situations or whatever. That was just something that I noticed that like I st had started doing like I was not glorifying the Lord in my eating habits because my eating habits controlled me instead of me controlling my eating habits. So how about this? Just give us what's a normal day or normal week look like for you in regards to exercise and eating? Well, we Paul. like specifics. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I work out three times a week, sometimes four. So yeah, I mean, you hear that. It's not like she's saying she's in the gym for an hour and a half every day, including Sunday. Right. And for me as well, I'm consistent and consistency is the big word there. Three days a week consistently and I'm feeling good. We're all on a different journey yeah. and you don't need to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger and be like, okay, now I'm, I've arrived. For me, the working out thing has been a process because for a while there, I was just kind of like hit or miss. Like I would do really well and work out for like a whole month, three times a week, wouldn't miss, like whatever. And then the next month, like I would not work out maybe but once that month. Um, and so again, it became like a spiritual thing of like, like, Lord, if you want me to do this, like if this is like, a God honoring thing. Like I need your help. I need you to help me find something that I enjoy doing because like going to the gym, just like, and just, just like was so boring to me. So like, I just prayed, like, I need you to help me find something that I enjoy doing. I need you to help me like see this as a priority, not something that like, oh, if I get the time to do it, I'll do it. Or, oh, my schedule got super busy today. So I just won't be able to do that. Um, like, no, this like, is a priority that needs to be, go. that needs to become something that you cancel other things for rather yeah. than that's the first thing to be canceled. Yeah. Which saying that, like even just like a few months ago would have sounded ridiculous. It needed to become a thing in my mind where I was like, I'm going to work around my workout schedule rather than work around like my daily schedule and then try to fit in working out just because I needed to personally do that because I knew if I didn't get to that point, like I would never work out because I would always come up with a reason as to why I couldn't go work out. You can tell that, that me and we're both pretty passionate about this and we're not, <laughs> you know, saying you have to become as passionate as us. We are encouraging you though, if this is something that's just not been on your radar at all, you know, here's where we're at with it. And let me just like <laughs> encourage you all because this is such a God honoring thing. This is such an important thing for all of us to strive to be like the best we can be physically, mentally, spiritually, and like let the Lord come alongside us and help us get there. 
because like if we are the best that we can be physically mentally spiritually like that gives us that many more opportunities to go after the lord to um go on mission trips to build houses when you probably are going to go on a mission trip and if you are eating like crap and you are at an unhealthy weight like it's going to be hard for you to do what the lord has called you to do in mission work it's going to be hard for you to go out and be a witness when you are struggling to walk to breathe like that's, I know it's like a ugh, scary, like intense thing for me to say, but it is, I just like pray and hope that this would maybe be an awakening to you that like, it is so important for us to be physically fit, our, the best that we can be physically, the best that we can be mentally, spiritually, like so that we can be the best servants for the Lord. We don't want to like make you feel like you're failing because you haven't gone to the gym or you're failing because you ate a donut today. Like I'm not perfect. I'm still figuring things and out. It's a process guys. Yeah. It's a process. It's a process with the Lord. So yeah, you know, we're for you guys. All right. We want to hear your all's thoughts. Comment below. We just hit on three very interesting things that I feel like a lot more can be said. So let's keep it going in the comment section. Guys, so we've been doing this for three plus years, talking about mainly dating stuff and not saying that we're done talking about dating stuff, but like we, for the sake of my sanity personally, but our sanity, we've got to like change things up every now and then. Like we've got to try new things. So if you would be so kind to comment below and let us know if there are some topics that maybe don't have anything to do with dating, but life or love, whatever. Yeah, we're just, um, we got the bug to switch things up a little bit. Yeah, that you want to hear us talk about, comment those, let yeah. us know. Yeah, and we'll see how this goes. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciated us talking about the topics that we mm -hmm. talked about. Oh, squishy. There she is, there Miss she Americana. Is. The dream queen. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it for us. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of The Drop. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll catch you again very soon. Have hope. And be free. Send cat statue through a second death. Is one decapitation not enough for cat statue? <laughs> <laughs>